Hi there guys. I've been asked a number of questions about a piece of cooking gear I use. And specifically, it's this plate just here. So this is a Life Venture titanium plate and they're around about 12 to 15 pounds. They weigh 2.25 ounces, around about 64 grams. And it's a very lightweight, efficient piece of equipment to carry on you if you don't want to make something or you don't want to sort of substitute any kind of plate made of birch bark, for example, which can be useful, but it does take time to prepare. So having something on you when you're just out for the day or any prolonged sort of period of time is very useful. But the question I keep getting asked is how do you put the handle on it to obviously use it as a frying pan? Because if you put it in the embers of a fire just like this, you're going to burn yourself or make a mess if you try and get it out. And it's very, very simple and I'll show you how to do it. So just looking at this place a little more closely, you can see that they've rolled the edge round where the plate has ended, where the metal's ended. They've rolled it round like they do on lots of different kind of metal tins and things. And that plays a key feature on how this handle really works. When you're choosing a piece of wood, make sure you don't get anything too soft. Um, if you're going for really, really soft woods, they may have a tendency to burn in the fire. Even if they're green, they'll dry out very quickly and they just won't bite properly on the lip of the frying pan, which is the key thing about making this handle. I've got hazel here, and hazel's a great wood to work with. And this is green hazel, so I've cut it down from live. And um, generally what I do is I use the off cuts of bits of hazel that I'm using to make a camp with to make the handle of the frying pan, as opposed to just going out and cutting down a whole limb just to make the handle of the frying pan, because um, it hardly seems worth it in some cases, and it's a bit unfair on the tree. Um, so what you want to do is just take a piece, piece of hazel like this and probably about two centimetres wide or a little bit bigger than your thumb will be absolutely fine. Then you want to take your saw. You can lock the piece of hazel in between your two legs. You can part your legs to stabilise the piece of hazel and then it will lock in place. And you can cut in and you don't want to go in too far. Halfway is absolutely fine. Now what we're going to do is just take the bark away from the end that's going to be in the frying pan, simply because we don't want any potential issues with bacteria and things like that and nasties getting into your, your pan, although I've never had any issues with that and it does get sterilised to a degree. And just clear away any sort of dirty bits on the end, just bevel it off. That should be absolutely fine. So you can see the cut just there, going in at an angle doesn't have to go in at a particularly steep angle, that's about 20 degrees. 45 might be a little bit better, so that's probably a little bit too shy, but that's not too bad. Just take the pan and push it into the notch just like that. And then work it in, and that's it. That's about as complex as it's going to get. And what you'll find is the pan won't come out because it locks in to that join and the weight of the food and everything in it um, just keeps it actually anchored in to that piece of, uh, piece of hazel there. And if you really want to go the extra mile, what you can do is take a small twig, for example, a green twig's better, one that's uh, still alive because obviously it will get burnt very quickly. And you can sort of open up the jaw of the frying pan and just push the twig in. You can see there, now that little twig's in there, it really locks it in place a little bit better. But it isn't exactly necessary. I think there are always concerns when you see this, or when I let other people use the pan, or I'm on a course and they're, they're having to cook their food on it, they're concerned that the pan is going to drop out. And it never has to date, and I've uh, never had any problems with it at all, given the design, even when the pan is really loaded. And, um, you know, you're just sitting it on the fire, and the good thing about hazel is, is when it's on the fire, or most woods, obviously, is that uh, all the sap gets cured out of it because of the heat, and it actually grips the pan even more, and uh, there's no chance of it coming out. So once you've used it on the fire to cook your food, and you're sort of done with it at a later stage when it's cooled off, and you're freeing up the bit of hazel, you'll find it's even tighter than when you originally put it on, because it's constricted, because um, all the moisture's been drawn out of it because of the heat. But um, you can put a little point on it and just stand it up in the ground like that. And if you're sort of worried about stirring your food and you're thinking, well, how do I reach my food? I need to move it round. Just take the bark off another piece of hazel 
and flatten it off slightly. And you can sit back from the fire just like this and cook your food and move it around and that's pretty much what I do and you've seen me do in most videos. And it just saves you carrying any extra weight really and you've got a very minimal setup, you've just got this titanium plate and uh, you can just build a handle for it when you set up a camp somewhere if you're going to copy some hazel down to make other things out of. So I hope that video has answered the question about how to make the handle for the Life Venture titanium plate. It's really easy and um, it's a fantastic product given it's very lightweight at 2.25 uh, ounces and it's titanium as well, I don't really like using aluminium, I generally go with stainless steel or titanium and um, I find titanium great obviously because it's lightweight and it's very strong and you don't notice it's there at 2.25 ounces so you know it's worth packing along with you, nice and compact and you can cook for sort of two, three people with such a small pan depending on what other things you've got going at the same time so you don't always need a gigantic pan to take out with you that weighs a lot but yeah, hope that video's helped and thanks for watching guys and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.